Greetings, brethren of the One God, His One Church throughout this world. It's the 4th of May, 2023. Uh, Trevor's back with me today uh, after his wonderful stay in Wales, UK. And I'm just going to open prayer, then I'm going to put it over to Trevor. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, for who you are. We commit this day into your hands. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, your compassion, and that you're for us, never against us. Now, Father, we pray for you, Lord God, to bless all your people, all your children, Father, out there, those who are on the narrow way, those who are choosing today to remain in you, Jesus, those who are open to the Holy Spirit to be led by the Holy Spirit today in their twos and threes as we go forward in Christ heavenwards. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So I'm just going to put it over to Trevor. Morning, brothers and sisters. Um, we're sitting here in Norwich overlooking the city and another lovely day in Norfolk. Um, just want to share my testimony, how uh, I came to know the Lord. I was in Plymouth in 1971 doing a degree, an uh, external London University degree in geography and geology, plodding along quite nicely but feeling very empty at times and wondering what life was all about. And one Sunday evening, a more a mild, damp Sunday evening in Plymouth, as it usually is, drizzly, I just walked into this open door of a, a religious building, an Anglican church on Plymouth Hill, St Andrew's Church on Plymouth Hill. I just walked in. I thought, I'll, I'll, I'll go to church. First time I'd ever decided to go to church on my own in my life, in my whole life. I was 21. I decided to walk into this church building. And I went in and then the, the meeting was just starting. There was a song, the vicar preached, and I sat there and listened. And at the end of the at the end of the um, meeting an Indian lady came over to me and asked me if I would like to talk to the vicar. I said, Well, not really not now, I better get back to my lodgings. They'll be wondering where I am. Um but she said, Well, would you like to stop for the youth meeting? It's only half an hour. I was like, well, yeah, OK, I'll, I'll stop for the youth meeting. But um, obviously I was being drawn by God to know him. And uh, at the youth meeting, somehow I got invited to the Bath Street Mission Hall. This is a united church mission where a few people get together every Saturday evening to share the gospel in the worst parts of Plymouth, Union Street. They go out with little tracks and uh, try to engage with people. And if anyone is interested, they invite them back to the mission hall for a cup of tea and a chat. I thought, yeah, well, I'll go. I'll go, because I was um, searching and God was drawing me. So I went to the Bath Street Mission Hall um, that Saturday evening, and it was good. It was a handful of people. They were There was a big cross up the front. They sang a few songs and um, a man gave a short message on the gospel of Jesus Christ and I went back three Saturdays and on the third Saturday I made my commitment to Jesus I was drawn I was convicted of my sin I put my hand up and I said yes I want to know more about Jesus I want to know him so we went into Rome and uh, the man prayed for me and he asked me to pray and I prayed I don't know how I prayed it's the first time I ever prayed on my own in my whole life so I prayed and asked Jesus into my heart to forgive my sins and to show me the truth. And immediately after that prayer, I knew I was saved. I knew I was born again. I felt the debt and weight of sin lift off me. And I was rejoicing and um, went back to the students, told them what had happened, told them I was saved now, I'd given my heart to Jesus. And they were not very interested. So that was the beginning of my um, life, uh, 
Life of Faith. I kept going every other Saturday and I used to go out with uh, four or five people on the streets in uh, Union Street in Plymouth and we would hand out a few tracks and we would try to engage with people and we would invite people back to the Mission Hall place when, for a cup of tea and if they want to chat, talk about God, talk about spiritual things, we did. So, so that was the beginning of um, my faith life, my faith walk with Jesus. He called me, he drew me into that place and he revealed himself to me. Um, and then I heard the gospel and I received the truth of the gospel into my heart. And I began to pray then and I went to all the meetings. I went to the, God led me to the Elam Church uh, in Plymouth on Knott Street. And at that time you had to get there half an hour early to get a seat. There was a little revival going on and it was really good. People were being saved, healed, set free, filled with the Holy Spirit every Sunday morning and evening and during the weekday meetings. So it was good. I used to look forward to going there. Um, so I was praying and God was leading me and directing me. And of course, the time came where I had to decide, well, yeah, now that I have came to know the Lord, I actually lost all interest in my course now. I lost all interest in geology, in evolution and all this stuff they were teaching us. It was it was just now empty, it meant nothing. All I want, wanted to know was Jesus and more of him. So I prayed. And I said, Lord, well, the time is coming back for me to go back to my third year. I, I will go back and endure it. But, but if you give me an opening uh, before I go back, I'll, sh I'll take that as a sign that where you want me to be. And I think a few days later, I was walking through Norwich and I just happened to look down on the ground and there was a folded piece of paper. And I picked it up, I don't know why I picked it up, and it was a read it, and it was a prayer request for a, a man who was evangelising in North Norfolk, inviting people, people to come and help him. So immediately it clicked with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's it. I rang him, I went over to meet him, and um, I stayed with him for two years. And uh, we, uh, we used to go around the villages in North Norfolk, sharing the gospel. We went into one or two schools, gave our testimony uh, to the Christian meetings. And it was good. And we, we started a small church in Holt and we had a f handful of people coming, about, about 30 people in the end. And um, so that was quite good. I was enjoying that. and. God was blessing me. I was learning how to be patient, how to wait, how to how to um, communicate with people. But then, after two years, this man was led back to America to um, to uh, to witness in America and share the gospel in America in another area. So I was left in Norfolk. I went back to Norwich, and um, basically, I. Uh, I joined the Elam Church there because I thought, well, Elam is, is the place to go because I've seen so much happening at the Elam Church in Plymouth. So I went to Elam and I was baptised in water, obeyed the Lord by being baptised in water. And in my time there, after a month or two, um, I was invited to a house church meeting where I met this man called John Hammond, who invited me <laughs> to go out on the streets with him. and to share the gospel. I said, well, that's good. That's an invitation I can't turn down because it's God's will. And at that time I was working in the evenings, evening shifts, so I had my days fairly free up, up till four o'clock. So we did that and I met him at a, a centre in Norwich and, and we went out just walking around the streets and engaging with people as the Holy Spirit led. So that was the beginning of my faith life, and here we are today, 52 years later, still praising God and still seeking to share the wonderful gospel of Jesus Christ our Lord. And Amen. now I'll hand you back to John, who's got a few words to share. Amen, brothers and sisters, have a good day. The Lord be with you. Um, may the Lord direct your hearts into God's love and Christ's perseverance. We need to persevere today, brothers and sisters, because the challenges against the true church are getting bigger and bigger and stronger 
and we must persevere and we must hold on to the truth and we must love the truth not change the truth or compromise the truth we must love the truth love Jesus love his word and love to obey him thank you brothers and sisters now we'll hand you back to John amen amen, amen. yeah that's brilliant amen love the truth and of course we know the truth is a person Mm. Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. the living word. Jesus himself is living and active, sharper than a double-edged sword. He pierces through people's hard exterior to touch their heart with the truth. Christ is the truth. And, and he's given us this privilege of speaking the truth in love to whosoever. And as you know, if you've been following me for a while, I keep emphasising the two and the three. And um, if Trevor could find that scripture, we'll, we'll read it to you, where Jesus actually was talking about where two or three are gathered, I am with you. And of course, we touched on this the other day about Jesus sending out the twelve six twos went out and they they went out in faith jesus commissioned them put them together sent them out together in christ in his will in his plan to go by faith not taking a bag for the journey but to live by faith six pairs <clears throat> another occasion he sent 36 pairs, 72, out. And these disciples came back rejoicing. Even the demons submit to us. And Jesus gave them this observation. Rejoice rather that your names are written in the book of life. It's to give us perspective. Because the demons aren't submitting to us, they're submitting to Christ, to his spirit. And of course, we know the enemy hates Jesus, hates the name of Jesus, the Spirit of God. And of course, he hates us, disciples of Christ, ambassadors, servants. So with this two and three are gathered, the unity, the bond of peace, the bond of the Holy Spirit, the unity in the Holy Spirit. We are one in Christ. So Trevor and I met all those years ago in, in somebody's house church situation. He wanted to, to start a church in his home and he wanted to be a church leader. Only that was his ambition. He started his church. And, and had he not started his church, arguably, I, w I wouldn't have met Trevor. Certainly not in that place at that time. And of course, that church fizzled out. You could say it was for a season. The church is the body of Christ. And every biblical marriage is the church, as Christ loves the church, Husband, love your wife as Christ loves his wife, the bride. But then the husband is the bride too, to the coming bridegroom. But there is this perfect order that God has told us through the scriptures. It cannot be changed. God's word is true, the scriptures are written. The enemy tries to undermine every biblical marriage in Christ, where Christ is the cornerstone, Christ is the foundation, Christ is the door and Christ is the capstone. Our life in Christ is all about Christ, as if our life in Christ can be about anything or anyone else. And of course, I am emphasizing again, a naturally born man married to a naturally born woman 
in Christ is the biblical marriage in Christ. Being perfected, transformed, honed, fashioned as living stones to fit with each other through Christ, the cornerstone. And that is the biblical marriage in Christ. So the partnership with the gospel is like a marriage, but we're not married to one another. We're not married to one another. If you're married, a biblical marriage, your wife and you are married. And you are united in the calling of God. As the church, the, the one body of Christ, our purpose is to lead people to Christ. We must watch out increasingly for the spirit of divisiveness. It's not Jesus who, who's dividing the sheep. It's Jesus dividing the sheep from the goats. But we're sheep. We listen to Jesus the shepherd, we hear the voice of Jesus the shepherd, and we obey Jesus the shepherd. He is the pastor. No man is God. No man is Jesus. No man is the Holy Spirit. So the challenge is, how can man run a church, even of two, without Christ? Of course, he cannot run his church without Christ. Jesus is the head of the church, the body of Christ. Jesus is the head of the husband, who biblically is the head of the wife. And there's nothing chauvinistic about that. There's nothing of lording it over the woman. Christ loves his church. And it's for us husbands to love our wives as Christ has loved his church. Perfect love of Jesus casts out all fear. We just look at Christ's relationship with his disciples. The perfect love of the head of his ecclesia, his disciples, his people. The children of the Father. We are all children and God is the Father. Disciples are like a mother, but don't call disciples mother and certainly don't call disciples father. God is the Father. The Father over all. Ephesians 4, unity in the one Holy Spirit. And our first love is Jesus Christ. And he is number one to all of us in our twos and threes. Once you have a biblical two in Christ, and I'm not just talking about marriages in Christ, I'm talking about gospel partnerships in Christ. Once you have that equally yoked a, a fellowship, partnership, one yoke for the two, then God in his wonderful way can add a three or a four or a five, or a six, or a seven. But unless you have a, a unity of two, you cannot have a three. Of course, there are many people in Norwich, UK, in their own twos and threes. But the challenge is from today, 4th of May, 2023 is can two become a three and can two twos become a four in Christ according to the will of God the Father the Father over all the one body of the one Christ that is the challenge and of course we're not talking about an organization we're not talking about a charity or a foundation or a trust a company, 
We're not talking about an organization according to the pattern of this world, according to the rules and regulations and employment laws of this world. Of course, we're not talking about that. We're talking about Jesus Christ and the way he led his disciples according to the will of God the Father. And God has given us the Holy Spirit and he is the teacher. Did the Apostle Paul begin an organization with Paul called the Archbishop above all the other, other bishops? Absolutely not. The letters that were written in the New Testament become the new covenant that God has put in place with us, his people, his ecclesia, his church, his children. And God is the Father. God is the head, Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit, he's the teacher. Those who have a title, pastor, if they don't love people, whatever their title is, they're not a pastor. We talked about this recently about love God, love your neighbor as you love yourself and do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. And if you don't love the sheep, don't tell me you're a pastor. Jesus prophesied about these days. In the last days, there will come many claiming to be Christ, claiming to be teachers, apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, pastors, shepherds. God knows the heart of every single individual. That's what spiritual gifts are all about. God knows those who receive prophecy, welcome prophecy, listen to prophecy, test and weigh prophecy, according to the Holy Spirit, according to Holy Spirit breathed scripture. We must submit one to another. And submission begins one to another in your twos. Biblical marriages, of course. Biblical gospel partnerships, absolutely. Where neither is the boss. The husband isn't the boss of the wife. A gospel partner, they are equal, co-equal, co-heirs in Christ. Under one God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Yahweh, Yeshua, Messiah. We are sons, small s, of God, big G. Then it comes, if those are open to you, says Jesus, as a two in Christ, they are open to him. As long as your motives, motive is truth in love, perfect love of Jesus. Not money, not power, not manipulation, not domination, not trying to control people because self-control is the fruit of the Spirit. Those who listen, listen. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. The trouble is with religious leaders, they, are, they have become like Pharisees increasingly blind and deaf. They cannot see Jesus. They can't hear the Holy Spirit. They refuse. And the issue facing the churches is not just issues of blessing the unblessable, which is affecting the Anglican church at the moment, It's about submission one to another. We are a family and we have mature brothers and sisters and we have immature brothers and sisters and some are babies. 
one of the issues facing the churches is this idea that you must be born again. And many claim that's just for the Pharisees, because Nicodemus was a Pharisee. But the truth is, every single person has gone wrong, has fallen into sin, whether it's the Pharisees, hyper-moral people who are self-righteous, or the tax collectors, the sinners, the prostitutes, the publicans, who know there's nothing righteous about them, but all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of them. All of us. All of us need a saviour. And we have a saviour, Jesus Christ. And I emphasise Jesus as the real Jesus, the real Christ, the real Son of God, the only begotten Son of God, the uncreated creator. And we call him Jesus, Yeshua Messiah, Father, Holy Spirit, Yahweh, King of kings, Lord of lords, wonderful saviour, counsellor, mighty God, everlasting father. And the list goes on and on and on. The light of this world, Jesus Christ. So I've talked enough. We could get into the scriptures and, and find all the chapters and verses for you. But Jesus said, where two or three are gathered, I am with you two or three. Every two, once Christ has united you as a two and the enemy cannot divide you because the cornerstone is in the middle and the enemy cannot divide Christ, then God will add to you a three and then a four, a five, a six, a seven. And we don't have to meet physically. We pray for one another. We pray and intercede for one another in Christ, in the Holy Spirit, before Father's throne, for one another. Until God the Father sends Christ, one day of salvation at a time. So let's end it here. Pray for us as we pray for you. Keep in touch. Keep praying for us. Unity. No division in God's people. God bless you. Brethren of the one God, it's a goodbye from me. Goodbye and God bless you from Trevor. And keep in touch and we'll speak again according to God's will. God bless you.